What was that? Oh. Could have used the night spell this morning. Mm. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah. Okay. You didn't come on the on the bike. <laughs> In the sweat one. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to start today, Membez Amad Aleph. We start from Tani Ida. Now, we had one ton of Rabbanon so far. We are, so we thank Hashem. We're able to learn Torah every day. Let's have a learning. We should have the base of Migdash immediately. We had Tanur Abono. We quoted the Brisa. You know what? I actually get a Chumash. <coughs> the Pasuk says, um, One pasuk talks about people are fighting, and yeah, so, uh, yeah. people are fighting, and they hit a pregnant woman; she'll miscarry, but there will be no fatality. The woman won't die. However, they, they have a punishment on the person that hit. He has to pay Baal Isha. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> if, there is, if there is a fatality, then he should give a life in place of a life. It says, oh, there's a machlaik, is what that means. But, okay. Then it says, if a man hits a slave, he goes free. Then if an ox scores a man or a woman and the man or woman dies, so suckle you suckle ashar, you stone the ox, you cannot let it eat the flesh, and the owner of the ox is innocent. If it was a, a sharamuad and he didn't guard it and it kills a man or a woman, so ashar you suckle the gambal of humus, the ox is stoned and its owner shall die. What does it mean it dies? The owner dies? It means by the hands of heaven, Rashi tells us. I mean, based on the Gemara or whatever. So, um, is that kind of like cars or is that so? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But however, then it goes on and says, in that ransom, sh- in, in that ransom shall be imposed upon him. In Kaifa Yusha Salo. And so there's a ransom that, that atones him for that. Okay. If a gore is a slave, a gore is a slave. Then you have to pay 30 coins to the master and the ox is put to death. So in one of these verses, we said, Bala Sharnaki, the oh. owner of the ox is innocent. Right? So Sharnaki means Tom? No, plain. I understand, yeah. but that's what they just used here. But in the case of Tom. The effect. It's in the case of Tom, yeah. There's more. <laughs> <that'd be good. coughs> right. It's being used in a case of a tam. The owner of the ox is innocent, and she doesn't have to pay anything. And what do we mean over here? Uh, with the Gemara before said that he doesn't have any hana. He can't have benefit from the ox. He can't eat the flesh that we learned already. And also, Balashanaki can't have benefit from it. 
we learned Espesari comes to me also the hide or whatever. Okay, so the last uh, Gemara we had Rabbi Eliezer saying that Bala Sharnaki means that he doesn't have to pay Chatzik Kaifer. We had this question where Rabbi Kiva says, of course, he doesn't have to pay Chatzik Kaifer. The, if you kill the Ach and everything a Tom pays is always Migufai, so how do you get Chatzik Kaifer out of a dead Ach? Tanyidach is where we start today. It's like five lines from the top. Bala Sharnaki, the owner of the Ach is clean. Is innocent. He doesn't have to pay for the value of the fetus. For example, if it hit a woman and the fetus died, he doesn't have to pay the, the, the husband as he would have if he would have been fighting with someone. This is just his ox. His, if his ox scores a woman and the, and the, kills the fetus, he doesn't have to pay for that. Amalei Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says to Rabbi Yisya Glili, Rabbi Yisya Glili and Rabbi Akiva are contemporaries. He's possibly uh, considered a, a teacher of Rabbi Yisya Glili, but uh, they're, they're also friends. They're Talmud Chavar. So Rabbi Akiva says, We had that other Pasuk that says if the men will fight, and they hit a woman, and it says over there that he has to pay for the for the fetus, he has to pay the for the offspring, he has to pay the husband. But over there, we said when men are fighting, anashim shvarim. and I already know that it's only men and not if it's an ox. So why are you telling me that Bala Sharnaki is teaching me that the ox is is a that ox is exempt? The owner of the ox is exempt from paying. I already you know, know it from another pasuk. Uh, yeah, oh, so that's a good point. One more uh, strike, I suppose, until. The uh, right. That's a good point. The Gemara is now going to get into if it's what I would have thought, if it's only a Muad, if it's a Tom. Uh, let's see. Gemara says, Shaper, come Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva has a good point. What would Rabbi Yisraeli respond to that? Amar of Ula, Braid Ravidi Yitzchak. What the Braid Ravidi says that it's necessary, Rabbi Yisraeli, uh, it's uh, Rabbi Yisraeli is Pasuk of, of, of Bala Sharnaki is necessary. I could have thought, mm-hmm. when it says man, I could have thought, not oxen that are similar to a man. Now, what would that be? What are oxen similar to men? So it would have said like this, that when a man, <laughs> when a man causes damage, he's always a muad, other muad lailam. He always has to pay full price. So I could have thought that it's only a man that would have to pay for the offspring. But not an ox that's a muad. A muad ox would not have to pay for the offspring because it says anashim, but not the shvarim, which would, would have been it's comparable. But not ox that are anashim muadim, af shvarim muadim, hotam, mechayev. But I but I would never would have told me what about a tam, a tam which is not any similar. You know, it's not even in the contrast. The tam is not even in the contrast to the to the anashim. So I could have thought that maybe the time would be chayef. Because Rachman and Balashanaki the patas. Rabbi Yisya Glili's pasuk tells me that the Balashanaki is that a time is also exempt from paying for the fetus. Amar Rava, Rava says to Ravula, Braid Ravidi, Yitziva Bahara Vigura Bishmei Shemaya. Yitziva, I think, means the native. Um. Does it mean the native or does it mean the uh, standing? The citizen, good. Good, good. <clears throat> um, it's an expression that says it's like um, that everything is counterintuitive. You're, you, that I would have said, Giura means the stranger. It says the native is on the ground and the stranger is, uh, is in the heaven. I remember when I learned this once, my teacher translated it He's standing on the ground but gyura gyura means an arrow and his arrow is in the heavens and i always thought that's what it meant until i saw it in um, the book that I usually have here the reference guide the mm-hmm. uh, i saw in there that that's a mistranslation uh, gyura yitziva means the native not doesn't mean standing and the and the gyura doesn't mean an arrow it means a stranger he quotes a targum i forget the targum somewhere it says um uh, 
But you'd see there's Nitzah Right. Right. Phrase. In this phrase. It's, a, it's actually a quote from a Targum on a Pasuk. Um, I forget what it, what it is. By Ezra or something. It had this a Targum to the Pasuk and it was Mamish this. Anyway, the idea here is, is that a Tam, you would say is Chayev, and a Mood, you would say is Pater, until you have the Pasuk. That's what you would have thought. That's it. so counterintuitive. I would have thought the Tam should be Pater, and the Mood should be Chayev. Right. And you do, you're telling me to the opposite. Alama Rava, it's just Rava says it differently. Rava says, Salkadai Khamina would enter your mind to say, Anashim Balashvarim Adem and La Anashim. Same story. That only people that will be high to pay for, for the fetus is men, but not animals that are comparable to men, which are referring to a muad. Ma Anashim Muadim, Afshvarim Muadim. But a muad animal would not have to pay for the fetus. The kalvachaim al atam and the petiri, and then I would have known automatically that a tam is putter as well. So that's what hmm. Rav is throwing into this. Okay, if you know a tam is putter and you know a muad is putter, so we're back with our problem. So what about the uh, balasharnaki? You you were telling me that you needed a pasuk a balasharnaki. Then hadakas rachman a balasharnaki. Then the pasuk comes in and tells me balasharnaki to teach me the tam putter muad chayev. Pasuk tells me. Don't learn it the way you thought of learning it, but rather you should do it exactly the opposite. And you should say that really the only one that's potter is really the tam, but really a muad is going to actually be chayev for the, to pay for the fetus. So if, if the fetus is just a regular person, otherwise you would kill the animal if it was um, a tam, pay like a fine for the dead uh, body. Right. Um, but if it's a uh, Fetus, like changes all of stuff. Uh, right. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, what the big deal with the fetus is that getting a monetary payment for a life. And sometimes in this case, there's really capital punishment because if the woman would die, the mother would die, then it would be capital payment, then you don't pay it all. That's, I mean, that's what we're seeing from that. From well, just the, the fetus. Text. And the fetus. But if the woman doesn't die, then you just pay for the fetus. The woman is just injured, then you just pay for the fetus. And like, like the value of a person based on their value as a fetus, right? Yeah. As a fetus. Whatever they would pay for us. That's what I read in Rousseau, that um, every child is worth four times as, uh, as the, the, the cost of feeding him. On the farm, and it, it, this uh, it's value, uh, the professor can correct me. <laughs> the cost of uh, labor to food. Anyway. Excuse me, I have a general question. I kind of lost in the last few days. So, in general, <laughs> somebody does damages, somebody else pays for it. These pursuits are. Exception to the general rule about the Tom and the Mu'ad, correct? It seems to me what's going on in the Gomorrah the last few days is trying to figure out how to limit or interpret those pursuits. Right. What we have now is coming up today, and I'm asking if this is correct. Attempts to interpret it with Savra with logic. People saying you don't need logic here. Also, uh -huh. is that, is that uh -huh. yeah. Well, the problem is, is that we're dealing with the concept of kaifer, of monetary payments for for the loss of a life. As to distinguish it from damages. Yeah. So the question being asked is, how do these the specific possible? Um, and yeah, what is this teaching what us? Need yeah. Yeah, that's the confusing part here because normally if a person kills another person, so you have the death penalty. If yeah. an animal damages another, so you have the regular payment. Right. Now we have an animal killing a, uh, a person because the owner didn't watch it properly. So we have this mixed type of uh, payments. So before we mentioned Kufra Kapara, that maybe it's a uh, Kaifer is maybe an atonement, or maybe it's just a penalty. 
different ways of looking at it. Now we have that you don't have to pay for what what other things do you don't have to pay for? Balashar Naki. Balashar Naki, we were learning before, it tells me that the owner of the ox gets nothing. Now we're adjusting it. Not that the owner of the ox gets no benefit from his ox. The owner of the ox, Naki, means he doesn't have to pay certain payments that he could have had to pay. It's either he doesn't have to pay half kaifer, or now he doesn't have to pay for the Mabel others. We're taking payments off him. Now the Gemara just says that that Balashanaki was actually telling me that he does have to pay. He does have to pay if he's a muad. It's only if he's a tam that he doesn't have to pay. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Amalaya Abaya. Abaya says to Rava, Elamayata, if that's the case, that you want to learn that when it says Anashim, it's coming to tell me Anashim, Vilayshvarim, Adem, and Anashim, but not men that are similar. However, if it would be a tam, then you would then you would have a kalvachimer, and then the balashanaki comes to tell me that really a muad is chayev. So if that's the case, gabi b'ishes nami neimahachi by embarrassment, we should say the same thing. Over there, we had a case where two men are fighting, and one of the women uh, grabs one of the men in his uh, private area, and he embarrass she embarrasses him. So but then it says that you cut off her hand, which means that he has, she has to pay for the embarrassment. Um, we should say, it says over there, ki natsu anoshim. Uh, is that the pasuk? Yeah. <coughs> yes, when, the Nagfu Yishahara. That was by the, the Nagfu Yishahara. Yeah. Um, but then there was the other one, which... Ki natsu anoshim Also anoshim. Yachtav. Yeah. yeah. And um, is that here in Shemais? Is that here in, in Mishpatim? No, that's in Tvar. That's in Tvar. Okay. So, um, over there, it's, uh, uh, so we would say, just like over there, the men are, are men are in general are muad, because uh, every Adam is muad laylam. A, a person is always responsible for his actions. So I would say also the ox is coming to exclude if the ox causes embarrassment, that also it's talking about a muad, the kalvachaymer letamen, and then I would add in the kalvachaymer, Rava's kalvachaymer, that says if a muad is pater, then for sure a tam is pater, the petiri. And then hadakas rachman abalasharnaki. Then the pasuk says that the owner of the ox is exempt, tam pater a muad chayev. I would say that really a muad is chayev for baishas. All right, hitei ma'achinami. So maybe so. How do you know it's not so? <clears throat> maybe if an animal causes damage, um, maybe you actually have to pay, according to Rabbi Yisai Glili. Yachi, if that's the case, listen, Ibala Sharnaki, Rabbi Yisai Glili, Emir Patimid Mei Vlad, this is me Baishas. Excuse me. If Rabbi Yisai Glili holds that the time is exempt from paying for the... Uh, Paying for the uh, fetus and also paying for the uh, embarrassment for the baishas, then let him say that. Rabbi Yisai Glili Omer is part from from both. Why does he just say the mevul of this? Ella Omar Ella Abaya Verava Dami Tavayu, rather Abaya and Rava both say, Anoshim. When it comes to man, Ein Asin Beisha. If there is no accident by the woman, that means if the woman doesn't die. Then Yeyanshu, then the man, then the man has to pay for the fetus. Yeisha sin beisha, but if the woman does die, then we'll have the rule of kamle b'derab mine that if they mm. actually kill the woman, then you don't pay for the fetus. Lo yanshu, then you don't have to pay for the fetus. Shvarim, but that does not apply to oxen. The alpha gav the yeisha because by an ox, even if there is an accident, Yeyanshu, they still have to pay for the fetus. And as even if the woman dies, they still have to pay for the for the fetus. You don't have that rule of Kamle Bidaramine. There is no capital punishment. Then the Pasuk says, Balasharnaki the Pater. So what do we have now? We have a new Pshat. Not, not this difference between a Tam and a Muad, that a Tam would be Pater and a Muad would be Chayev. Now we're saying that everyone is Pater. 
Palashanaki, everyone is Potter. It doesn't tell me exactly, am I talking about only of Tam, only a Muad, or talking about both? Probably different ways of learning that. Okay, whatever the case is, that what comes out now is that is that what I'm learning from I'm learning from Pater Midme Vladis that even if even if the woman dies, we're still Pater Midme Vladis. From the ox. From the ox. So I would have thought that since there's no come labor mine, since there's no capital punishment here, so then the ox would have the owner of the ox would have to pay for the fetus. Even though there's even though there was a death of the woman. Kamash Malan comes to teach me that he's exempt. What do you mean? You're talking about now you're going back to the embarrassment. To the embarrassment so we, case. Yeah, what we moved off the embarrassment case because um, because we got rid of we got rid of that once we once we dropped the um, the kalvachimer to the tam then we dropped also the embarrassment case we said that um, an ox doesn't have to pay for an embarrassment we would have no 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 reason to say yes so we learned earlier that if an ox like, charges at someone to go and takes his or her right off. <clears throat> right. We said, we said that if it was intended to oh. cause damage, then there would there should be an embarrassment payment. Was there actually an embarrassment payment? Anyone remember? <laughs> we said that the that it it intended not to embarrass, but it intended to cause damage. Sherry should be a spotter. Yeah, we said that he's going to be potter. It's a very important Gemara back here that you mentioned this. We are Chizkiah says. Chizkiah has a um, has had a rule here that we say come lay the rab whether there's actual death penalty or not. Remember, Kamle Bidramine didn't only mean that if there is a full capital punishment, so then we don't make him pay. But even if there was, could have been a capital punishment, had it would had it been done and a little differently, this would have been a case of capital punishment. So then you would be exempt. Now back to us. <clears throat> now we're saying that if there would be capital punishment by a man, then we would say that there's no payment for the for the fetus but if there's no capital punishment then there is payment for the for the fetus um when it comes to the ox i could have thought that there's always going to be payment for the fetus kamash malan balasharnaki that there's no payment for the fetus even though there's no capital punishment maskif laravada barava atu basan talia milsa ravada barava says does it and is the, the is the difference if there was capital punishment the if the if the woman died the Kavana Talia Milsa really has to do with what the intention was. Hmm. If the person intended for his friend and ended up killing a woman, so then we would say that That's since there is no capital punishment there, he intended to hit the other man, but he hit the woman. That also, even though there was an accident, according to this opinion of, of uh, Ravada Barava, according to this opinion, we would say that there's, there's no capital punishment. And he should have to pay for the fetus, even though there was a death. You told me that the death of the woman is what was the, is what changes the whole difference between should there be a payment or not. Now we're saying that no, it doesn't have to do with the death of the woman. It has to do with the intention that came along with the death of the woman. If he didn't intend for her, then it's not a case of capital punishment, and so therefore he should be uh, chayev to pay for the fetus. He redoes this. He says, when it's talking about men, when they intend one for another, even if the woman dies, they have to pay for the fetus because there's no capital punishment there. But if they intended for the woman herself, then, they, then there is no payment for the fetus. 
Leishvarim, and that's coming to exclude what it would be by an, by an animal, that feel that even if they intend, if the animal intends for the woman, there still would be a payment for the fetus. Because of Rahman Abal Sharnaki the Patiri. So that's why the Pasik tells me Bal Sharnaki that they don't have to pay for it. The Khenki Asar of Khagi Midraima Tam, right? Well, it doesn't tell me. Bal Sharnaki is actually talking about a Tam. Right. Okay. Is there Kaifer for a um is there Kaifer for Vladis for the fetus? No, there would be Kaifer for the mother. I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, Rav Chagi Midrayma also also vaisi must need to be adi kavsei the Ravada Barava. He brought a brisa that matches what Ravada Barava says. That there's the, the difference is not if the woman dies. The difference is if the intention was to kill the woman or not. It was the intention to hit the woman? If there wasn't intention to they were intending for each other and they ended up hitting the woman, then they're going to be exempt. Um, Chagai. I actually have a cipher. I mean, the cipher is called Chagai, so when you say Chagai, it's like a Chagai. Uh -huh. um, hmm? Cipher. One of my scribes. His name, His is, name Chagai. is Chagai. Chagai. Yeah. I've heard of Shiro last night. Yeah. I didn't quite understand. Uh -huh. That's very interesting. He said that you don't know what to do. No. I listened to Rabbi Leibowitz. Oh. Here on this dog. Uh -huh. He said that when Kami went to Yavna, this dog forgot and established an alternate retreat. Oh. And it was in poor retreat, but he still listened to his opinion. Uh huh. He got out at the same time with Rabbi Yochanan. How did he get out? He set up, you know, when they let the Kukamim go to Yavna, they went north. Love it. Interesting that they bring the whole idea of the Yes, I'm a Love it. Love it. No, it does get factored in. When it comes to capital punishment, the person has oh. to intend to actually kill. Otherwise, it changes it, from murder yeah, to yeah. manslaughter and all of those different things. Yeah. Um, okay. Tanya Idach. Now we have another Brysa. This is our third Brysa now um, of what Balasharnaki means. It says Balasharnaki Rabbi Kiva Imer Naki Midmei Ebed. You don't have to pay for. The um, uh, uh, if an animal kills a slave, normally there's a payment of thirty coins, but that's only by a muad. What about by a tam? No, he is exempt. Balashanaki. He doesn't have to pay the thirty coins. Okay. Now the Gemara says, one second. This is Rabbi Akiva talking. Before Rabbi Eliezer had a statement, Balasharnaki. And Rabbi Lezer said that it means that he doesn't have to pay Chatzik Kaifa. Rabbi Kiva says, I don't get why you need that Pasuk, because you can't get Chatzik Kaifa out of, out of the animal itself, because you just stoned it. The animal's dead, and there's no value to it. So the Gemara asks, name of Rabbi Kiva Lenafshei. Why doesn't Rabbi Kiva tell himself, Why don't you say the same thing to yourself, Rabbi Kiva? You attacked Rabbi Eliezer by saying that, how do you expect to get any money out of the dead animal, out of the dead carcass? So what are you saying over here, Bala Sharnaki? You can't get money out of it anyway. <coughs> can't get 30 coins out of it. Or maybe you would thought maybe 15 coins, because it would have been uh, half the payment, let's say. Amr of Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, Kishakadam Bala V'Shachtai. Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says, we're talking about now, we are, before it got stoned, the owner went quickly and and um, and killed the animal and shechted the animal. So that's how you should be able to get some value out of it. Rabbi Kiva held that a time that kills a man, you have to pay full, right? 
I don't know what would be over here by the effort. It just says you don't have to pay. What don't what 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 is it that you don't have to pay if without this bus? Like I would have had to pay half or I would have had to pay full. I don't know. It's a slave. You know, it could be you're right, could be it would have been full anyway. Um so he says that he, he went quickly and he shechted it. I could have thought that maybe you should take a payment out of the flesh of the animal that was just shechted. So Kamash Malan comes to tell us that you don't. Because, because it was deserving of the death penalty, because it was, uh, it was supposed to be stoned. So therefore, you don't take any uh, any payment from it. If that's the case, the Rabbi Lezer Nami Kishikadam Veshachte. Why did Rabbi Kiva have a whole claim against Rabbi Eliezer before? If Rabbi Kiva himself has a way out, Rabbi Eliezer could say the same thing that he shechted the animal and that and they'll take the payment from there. It says Hachanami, it's true. The Savar, but he held Dilme Isli Time Achrin Adadif Mehai Mehai Benemale. So the truth is, is that Rabbi Kiva really could have answered Rabbi, the question that he had on Rabbi Eliezer, but he was hoping Rabbi Eliezer would come up with a different answer. Rabbi Eliezer. I'm not sure if it's, it's what it's saying is Kaidim Shinigmar Dinai, means he quickly shechted it before they had the uh, sack on it. So it wouldn't have been subject to Skila. So by it, is he, is he preserving value? Yeah. Value. Preserve the value, and then you should have to take the payment. So he's maybe doing a favor for the <clears throat> Right. Right. But then the Pasuk says that he doesn't get the money anyway. Talking about the Shleshim Shalevet, the 30 coins. This is the Russian. He brings down. Um, and the axe has to be present. We, 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 that was much like it. No, no. So they actually started before the Korban. And they were. And it says the Chachamim hated them. But they would bring their opinions for Bryce. Well, not him. We talk about this whole generation. The whole generation. But they refrain from using them for Bryce's, which is really interesting. Assuming a Bryce should be the even though they didn't like them. Who is that that's writing it? Does they say who? So, Rabbi Lezer, now I'm listening to the Shekadim So, why didn't Rabbi Eliezer actually answer that? That they shechted it first. Amalach, so he says to you, Hasam, who didn't scab and larga, sabahim of ours, kasa adam. Over there, we're talking about it was Chatsi Kaifer. Talking about an animal that was goring another animal, and it ended up killing a man. The shor lav bar katalahu klal, that really the ox was not meant to be killed. I would have thought that you have to pay kaifer. The salka salka daita chamina. Nechayev, I could have thought that you would have to pay the regular price. It's shechral amute, so the pasuk comes along to tell me. Balasharnaki, that you don't have to pay the half a kaifer. Aval hachadimi karabar katalahu, but over here where the ox is goring a, a man, it's goring a slave. 
It's not necessary to have a pasuk. Even though it was shechted. Okay, let me take a look at your. Um, where the axe is not subject to being put to death at all. Um, yeah, I don't know how it knows. How does the command know that that was the case before? That it was intending to kill an animal and it killed a person. That I would think to say that the owner should be liable for half kaifer. So the verse therefore needs to exclude such a payment. But here the axe intentionally killed a person we are from the beginning, it was subject to being put to death and its owner was conse consequently not required to pay half kaifer. The verse is not needed to exempt the owner from half kaifer, even though he subsequently saw the doctor before its body was rendered forbidden for benefit. Oh, oh. <coughs> uh -huh. Logic dictates that the terror could not have intended to impose a monetary punishment for an act for which a time is liable to death. For at the time the ox killed a person, there was no legal possibility of half paper ever being collected since the ox stood to be executed and its carcass forbidden for benefit. Thus, even if it sub subsequently emerged through the owner acting illegally and slaughtering the ox, that the ox did not become forbidden, it is self-evident that no monetary obligation exists. The Gemara asks, Rabbi Akiva nami hachiyavi, and the same thing applies to Rabbi Akiva, where he says the same story. Over there, we're talking about paying the 30 shkalim. Okay. So you're saying that it's not right? Yeah, but it's saying that I never would have thought that the, that um, going ahead and shechting it early would actually cause that there should now be an obligation to pay for the for the, for the half kaifer. Because since since it was supposed to be killed, since the axe was supposed to be killed, so it would have been exempt from half kaifer automatically. So the fact that he rushes in and shechts it, that shouldn't have changed anything. <laughs> yeah. We're exempting him from half kaifer, but Rabbi Akiva's claim. No, I don't think so. You mean to avoid? Um... Yeah, like they were trying to avoid the. I don't know if that means that's just getting the other person to be responsible because the guy told him back he says look what's the difference if it kills in my property kills in your property you have the same punishment so <laughs> So, um, yeah. Okay, so the Gemara says, that, uh, according to Rabbi Akiva, the same thing it, it would, uh, would apply, that we shouldn't change it just because he quickly ran ahead and shechted it. Ravasi says, this matter, I heard from a great person. Umanu, who is that great person? Rabbi Yesi Bar Hanina. It's Rabbi Yesi Bar Hanina we had ages ago. Yeah, that Rabbi Yesi Bar Hanina was a great person, remember? The Flamites. He says, It would have entered your mind to say, Rabbi Kiva's opinion, Hillel mentioned this before, 
that it, that although there's a difference between a tam and a muad, that difference is only if a, if a tam gores another animal. But if it gores a person, then there's full payment, according to Rabbi Akiva. He says the difference between a tam and, uh, and, uh, and forewarned is only by animals. So I could have thought like this. Um, so therefore, I would have to pay for the payment of the of the slave. I would have had to pay the full price. And I not only would I have had to pay the full price, but I would pay not from the animal itself. It was, according to Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva can get out of the problem that he had when he when Rabbi Eliezer said it. Rabbi Eliezer says that um, Balashar Naki is coming to tell me that the owner does not have to pay half kaifa. Rabbi Akiva attacks him. He says, of course, he doesn't have to pay half kaifa. There's no value to this animal because if it's a tam, you would have to pay me gufai. Now, comes along Rabbi Akiva and, and, and Rabbi Akiva, you don't have this problem because Rabbi Akiva holds that if an uh, ox scores a man, then you have to pay the full price. You have to pay the full price. Maybe you have to pay also me'aliyah. You, also, you don't pay from the animal itself. You don't pay from the animal itself. So Rabbi Akiva himself doesn't have the problem. Rabbi Eliezer had the problem. Because of Rahman Balashanaki. So that's why it says Balashanaki to say that he doesn't actually have to pay it, even though theoretically that could have been a valid payment. Amali Rabzir le Ravasi. Rabzir says to Ravasi that you're taking it too far because Vatavri Rabbi Kiva le Rabbi Kiva already broke this. I don't know what Gzizi means. So they translate it. He broke his fist, probably. He broke his strength. The Tanya was taught in a bright Rabbi Kiva and Yachal Yishalim and Ali at Tamalem Kmish, but as a Yasalem Guf Mishalim and Mishalim and Ali, even according to Rabbi Akiva, that says they have to pay full price when a Tom animal gores a human. But you still don't have to pay Me'aliyah. You still don't have to pay from your own property. You only pay from the animal itself. <clears throat> so you're still stuck with the same problem that you asked on Rabbi Eliezer. Elama Rava, rather Rava says it's true. It's necessary. And I could have thought it's different. Because I'm stricter by a slave than I am by a regular free person. Why? Let's say there's a free person that gets killed by an ox. So yeah, the owner of the ox has to pay the seller for what, uh, what he was worth. Slice him if he was worth um, 30. You have a pencil there? If he was 30. worth 30. No, I, I made a mistake in my mind. Okay. But there's there's no such concept of a common mood with a boy. Um, we said that a non-Jew has to always pay full price. Yeah. Nice insulation. If he's worth 30, he pays 30. Evid, you have to sell a nice insulation. Stalin nami de may evid menalia. So I could have thought like this. But since by a slave, that even if he's worth one coin, the owner has to pay 30 coins. I could have thought also that you should have to pay that value, not from the slave, it's not from the ox itself, but from his own money, his own property, you should have to pay it. Because of Rahman and Balashanakis, the Pasuk says he doesn't have to pay it. In other words, I could have thought, because we're stricter about a slave than we are by a regular free person, I could have thought maybe we should be stricter also when it comes to the payment that you should have to pay, even though there's no value to the actual ox, but you should have to pay Me'aliyah from his property. So the Pasuk says he doesn't have to pay. <coughs> Where was this? They were going back and forth. With the borrowed ox. Okay. We're going right. back and forth. Or if I would have told you this, like if it would have been for, if you told them it was a four one animal, you would have had to pay from the highest right. right, right, right. Okay, so Tani Kavasei the Rava, Rava's shot over here, that Balasharnaki is coming to tell me that I could have thought that you really should have to pay extra because by the slave we're stricter. We have a Brysa that supports that. It says Balasharnaki, owner of the ox, is innocent. He doesn't have to pay something. Rabbi Kiva, I'm not going to make effort. The Brysa says the Rabbi Akiva's comment is that he doesn't have to pay the value of the slave. Well, I didn't know. One second. It's logical. 
if you're chayev to pay for the a slave, and you're also chayev to pay for a free person, you made a distinction between a ben chayr and between if it's a tame animal or a moor. You should make a distinction also by the slave that there should be a difference between a tam and a moor. A moor should have to pay the 30 coins and a tam not. And also there's a kalvachaymer, ma ben chayn shnaysen kol shavya v'chalakta ben ben tam lamur, ever chayn nesen l'shleishim in a din shanach like ben tam lamur. For sure you should make a distinction between a tam and a mur. Buy a slave, you don't, you don't even have to pay his full value, you only have to pay 30 coins. By a regular person, you have to pay his full value by a free person. The Gemara says, lai, it's exactly the opposite. Mach mereni be'evad yaisim ben chayren. I have to view it the other way, that I'm stricter about the evad, why? Because you have to sell a nice and sell a by, a by a free person, I only have to pay his value. If he's worth 30, then he pays 30. But for Eved, but when it comes to a slave, you have to sell a nice and even if he's only worth one seller, he has to pay much more than that. He has to pay 30 coins. Could have thought that maybe you should also be Chayev for. Um, for Shleishim Shal Eved by a Tam. Tamalema says that he doesn't have to pay for the the, 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 the thirty coins of a slave by a tam. Okay. Tana Rabbanan. Rice that says like this. It says if a person has an ox and he doesn't guard it and it gores three times, the Hamas Isha Yisha, and it kills a man or a woman. So <clears throat> this is talking about. I'm sure Naga Chumit Mal Shilshim, who's already a Muad. Belayish Mirano Vahimis Yishisha, Hashay Yisak of a Gambal of Yumas. The ox is put to death, and the owner is also, owner shall die. In Kaifa Yusha Salav, and that ransom shall be imposed on him. Okay. And he shall give the redemption of his soul, which is the Kaifa. So it's cars. So Misa Bidei Shemayim is what it calls it. Okay. So the Pasuk the, says, V'hema says Shisha. Amar Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, V'chimam ba'azel elam deino. What is it coming to tell me it kills, that the ox kills a man or a woman? And l'chai av ha'leisha k'ish? Coming to tell me that this, the halacha of killing a woman is going to be the same as killing a man? That I have, for that I have a puzzle. If an ox scores a man or a woman, it was that pasuk that was right at the beginning of this. That was by the shartam. But we already said that. Rather, it's coming to juxtapose, to do a comparison. Just like by a man, the damages go to his inheritors. So to a woman, the damages go to her inheritors. The Gemara says, What about her husband? Why is it saying it goes to her inheritors? It should go to her husband. The husband doesn't inherit. But Tanya Vyarashai, so we have a Brysa. It says, Brysa quotes a Basak, that he inherits her. Why, when it comes to damages, does it not go to the husband? Rish Lakish says, We're talking about now, that if the woman dies, so that payment, since that payment is only made after the woman dies, that's considered money that comes to a person after the death. And the husband doesn't get that, that sort of... Um, those sort of payments. <clears throat> this is, we're more familiar with this. By a Bechar, that a Bechar takes a double, let's say there's um, two brothers, one older, right? And uh, one firstborn and one, and, and then a second son. So what they do is they divide all the value into three portions. And the older, the older son, the firstborn takes two portions and the younger brother takes one. And that's where, that's where he gets double. Now let's say, there was money that was supposed to be coming to the father, 
And because of something that, uh, whatever, some, uh, some profit that the father was making, but he didn't have it at the time of his death. So it comes in later. So we say that the Bechar doesn't take the double portion of that. He only takes what is actually in the pro property, in the possession of the father at the time of his death. But you don't take Roy Kibba Machsik. Roy means what could be coming later. You don't take that as if you have it already in your hand. You don't take Roy Kibba Machsik. So over here, what we're saying now is, is that the husband, because the money that comes to his wife is only after she dies, because it's Kaifer, Kaifer can only be paid after the death. So the husband doesn't inherit Roy Kibba Machsik. Because that's money that only is due only after the death. It's only for so, so the, the only only her inheritors, which mean her children from a previous uh, marriage or something, and or she didn't have children. be her uh, father and brother and whatever. But never the husband. It wouldn't husband. be the husband. Not her children from this marriage. Um, or it could be children. Would it be children from this marriage? Father could become an Right. Marriage. Right. It could be also children from this marriage as well. Yeah. My timer. What's the reason why you have to tell me that Kaifer only comes after the death? Well, I know it only comes after the death, but maybe theoretically, if the person is on his deathbed, maybe we should already, if the woman was on the deathbed, we should already institute the payment as of now because they're going to die later. We see that they're dying. Maybe they should already make a payment already. So, Amakra, Vahima Sisha Yisha. I'll show you Sakav Gambal of Yuma from Kaipi Yusha Salah. Pasuk says that only after you kill the ox do you, do you have to kill the owner. When killing the owner over here means that they have to make that payment. So it's only after the actual death. And you wouldn't kill the ox until the person actually died. So to the same as the payment also would not be paid while the person's still alive. Mara says, Ibn Zakin, Layama, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva doesn't say that the husband gets the damages. But Tanya, actually, not that the husband doesn't get the damages, that even by Nezakin, even by damages, it doesn't go to the husband, it goes to the other inheritors. So it's not because of Roy Kibba Machsuk. We find by Nezakin is the same thing. We find by other damages. But Tanya, we have a Brysa. Hika, Seisha, Yibayatsi Yiladeh. If you hit a woman and the fetus comes out, he has to pay the woman nezek and sar, that is uh, the damages and the pain. He pays the value of the of the fetus he gives to the to the husband. If there's no husband there, then it goes to his inheritors. If the woman isn't there, so the nezek and tsar, the pain and the damages goes to her inheritors, not to the husband. If she doesn't have inheritors, then, then he would acquire it. Actually, then the person wouldn't have to pay it at all because mm, there, was no there was no one to give it to. Then the one that before he gives it, he has already acquired it. Whoever takes it, right? It's like as if taken from Hefker. So before he gives it, he for sure gets it. So he doesn't have to give it at all. So our question now is over here, we're saying that even when it comes to damages, the husband doesn't inherit her. You told me the reason why the husband doesn't inherit her is because it comes after her death. And the husband doesn't have that sort of an uh, acquiring. Turns out it doesn't have to do with the death. It has to do with any damage the husband doesn't inherit. Amar Rabba, Rabba says, Begrusha. That case where he said the husband doesn't inherit, that's because they were already divorced. Nachman also says it's talking about that they were divorced already. That's why it goes to her inheritors. Amri, Grusha, Nami, Tiflik, Bidmei, Vladis. If they divorce, then why, when it comes to the payment for the uh, fetus, does all of that payment go to the husband? It should be split. <clears throat> so 
the Torah gives the, the value of the fetus to the husband, even if he wasn't even married. My time, what's the reason for this? The Pasuk says, as the as the Baal Ha'isha, the, um, the husband of this woman, the way it learns it is that the one that lived with the woman, that's the one that gets the, uh, the payment. <coughs> yeah, belongs to the father. Yeah. Benukma, it's easy to understand because uh, fatherhood starts from conception. Motherhood starts from birth. So it's, it's, meanwhile, it hasn't been birth, born. Right? Benukma le Rabba, going to govern mice. How come Rabba and Rav Nachman have to say we're talking about that it's um, that they were divorced? We have another option. And this, this, this option has to do with the Machlekes in Yesh Neichlin. Um, there's, a, there's a discussion if, if a payment already has been made, you know, Someone took money without, with, without um, getting it uh, certified that they really should have taken that money. So, for example, in the case of the first, the firstborn, that let's say he actually took a double portion from what wasn't really supposed to have been given yet. But if he did, if he took it on his own, what would happen then? So, there's a difference between if he took money or if he took property. So, it's a difference between Rabbah and Rav Nachman. So the Gemara says, "Vnukmul Rabba kegain shagavu mois, Rav Nachman kegain shagavu karka." Dama Rabba, because Rabba says, "Gavu karka yeshlei," that if property, according to Rabba, if property was was actually confiscated, then he's going to get his double portion. Gavu mois, but if he uh, confiscated money, then ain't light, then he doesn't get the double portion because it's not considered that it was already that it, it's not considered that he already that it was confiscated. That it was um, given to the father, and according to Rav Nachman, it's exactly the opposite. So basically, what we could have done over here is, you told me that why is it that the father, that the, why is it that the husband doesn't get the payment? Was because they were divorced. I had another option of doing this. I could have said that that. Um, that uh, the husband should get the payment, but talking about if he already collected, if he if he had taken it without permission, like, without, without permission. This is actually a machlaikus about this, and we were following the other opinion. Let me take a look at your notes. Yeah, the Gemara says, why was an essay for Rabbi and Rav Nachman to interpret the price as referring to a divorced woman? Let us interpret the price according to Rabbi as referring to the case after the death of the woman, the court collected payment for the damages in cash. And according to Rav Nachman, they collected in real properties. But also we find these Amram consider such payments to be prospective assets of a deceased creditor, which a husband does not inherit from his wife's estate. So it would have been the other way. It would have been um, exactly the one that the other one doesn't count. That would yeah, have been yeah. that payment. But Rabbi said that Gavakarki Yeshlai, but Gavamayis ain't lai. And Rav Nachman says Gavamayis um, Yeshlai, Gavakarki ain't lai. So seemingly, then both Rabbi and Rav Nachman could have explained the Bryce's Frank to a woman who was married at the time of her death. Rabbi could have explained that her damages were collected in cash, which he considers a prospective asset 
And Nachman could have explained the collective damage from real property, which he considers to be a prospective asset. So the students of the academy said these statements of Rabbi and Rav Nachman, that was a debt that was owed uh, according to the view of the Westerners, according to the rabbis, who maintain that generally an outstanding loan is considered prospective assets. But Rabbi and Rav Nachman say here that the Bryce refers to the divorcee because they're following Rebbe, and Rebbe holds that outstanding debts are always considered assets possessed by the de deceased, and as such can be inherited by the husband as long as he is still married to his wife at the time of death. That's why they couldn't say that they were married. Okay. Says now, Amar Reb Shimon ben Lakish. Shor Shem is asheved. If an ox kills a slave, shalei bekavana, without intention, pata mishleishu mishkalim, doesn't have to pay the thirty coins. Yeah, I'm not sure. Shenemar, because the pasuk says. Because you have to kill the ox. We're saying that the, we're not going to kill the ox if the ox didn't intend to kill. Um, are we talking about over here? When it says Shor Shehemis, could it be that it sat on it? Could be. So therefore it's uh, dark over right. enough or whatever. It's not. So it's like a regular one. Yeah. Just have an animal not kill him. Gore. So, so gore, you can't say. It's gore, it's intentional. Set on it Yeah, yeah, he's working on his um, books. One second, I lost it. Lost the zoom. Okay. So apparently, there's a Mishnah on Memdale. There's a mission coming up that says Shoshay Mishachach Bakaisal Vanafal Al Adam. This Gavan Argas of the Hem of Hargas Adam, the Knani of Harg Ben Israel, and the Falam Harg Ben Kemis Pate. So there's cases we are, we are, um, we won't have, we won't have the intention, we won't kill the ox, and we also won't have the, the Kaifer. That's interesting comment. I should do that with this one. Uh, just the thinking of the philosophy behind this process. Differentiates Tom and Amuad only by boring, not by any of the other forms of damage that are caused. Or then it, go, then it goes on and then it, and it says, uh, No, no, it doesn't have to be only that case, it could be the other cases as well. Okay. Um, so, he doesn't have to pay the 30 coins. Amar Rabba. 
So that was a, a din from Rish Lakish. Now, Rabbi says, Shar Shemus ben Chayrin Shlei Bekavana. If it kills a free person, the same sort of halacha, Patami Kaifer, Shnemer, Asha Yusak of Gambal of Yuma, some Kaifer Yusuf, Kozman, Shasher, Bastila, Bayam Masham and Kaifer, and Asher Bastila, and Bayam Masham and Kaifer. So we have these two halachas that there has to be intention either for the Shleishim Shal Evet, the 30 coins, or for Kaifer, has to be intended to, to kill. Esve Abaya, Abaya has a question. Hey, Mesherius, Plainy, I share Shal Plainy, or is Misham Al Piatz my? Someone says in the court, he says, my ox killed so-and-so. Or my ox killed the ox of so-and-so. So, so right. Um, the halacha is that the halacha is that he has to pay. Now, the rule, the rule is that um, if, you, if you admit to any sort of um, payment, so even though you can't self-incriminate, but you can still owe the money. You can agree that you owe the money and then you pay the money. So it says, my love, Kaifer. Apparently over here, <coughs> we're not going to kill the ox just because this guy said my ox killed. That he can't do. We're not going to kill the ox, but we're going to say that he's going to have right. to pay the money. Now, one second, you just told me before that if you don't kill the ox, then you don't pay the money. And here we're saying that you don't kill the kill ox and you do pay the money. The Gemara says, Loi Damim. That was talking about Kaifer. What happens now in the Gemara, the Gemara introduces this concept. He really throws off uh, all the commentaries and um, is that there's a monetary payment for damages that we never learned about. Um, we were always saying that there's, if there's a death penalty, then there's a death penalty. If there's a monetary payment, there's a monetary payment. What about the value of the person that goes along with that, uh, with the, with the, with the, with the um, yeah, what about the value of the person? So the Gemara says, yeah, there is actually a value that with that they have to pay. Now, what's the difference, Kaifer and the value? That Taisus uh, has to deal with. You see, even time Alamanda Kaifer to mean Nizik, Mike made Damam Le Kaifer. Same thing. If Kaifer is the value of the victim, See, kaifer could mean the value, the value of the perpetrator. Well, has to redeem his own argument, soul, right? right? But um, if it's the value of the victim, when it would have been for kapara, then we would have said that there is no kapara here. But here we're saying that you still have to pay for the damages, I guess, from the estate. Anyway, there's a concept of dhamim. So it's not a din, din of kaifer because kaifer, uh, Rabbah told us that you'd be exempt from. We're talking about it's a payment, a monetary payment. Idamim, if you're talking about a monetary payment, emaseifa. Let's go further. Hey, mishereis, apli shol pleni, yin mishal mal piatzmai. Idamim amayla. If a person says that my ox killed so and so slave, he doesn't have to pay. And one second, why not? If it's a fine, I get why he doesn't have to pay because shleishim shalav had the thirty coins. Is a um, is a fine. You never have to pay a fine on your own. Made the biknasas butter. But if it's talking about the value, so the value you should have to pay. You don't become exempt. Amale. So who's answering this? This is I guess Raba responding to Abaya. Yechil nashliyalach reisha damim seif knas. He says I can answer you that the first part of that price that you're asking question on is because that's the value. That's money, and the second part of the price. Uh, it's talking about the knas, the 30 coins. But I'm not going to tell you uh, pushed, um, uh, stretched answers. And both of them are talking about the value. When it comes to a free person where he would take kaifer on his own, how would he pay kaifer on his own? What would be a case where he would have to pay kaifer on his own? Says the Let's say there were witnesses that said that he killed. But we don't know. Was it a tam ta or was it a muad? <coughs> we know that the animal killed. And then Vamar Mari, but the master comes along and says, the owner says, the muad. So he admits that it was a muad, but I have a testimony that it actually killed. The Mishal and Kaifer al because he's just adding in that one detail 
I'll still accept and he'll have to pay the uh, the price. Say if there is no witnesses at all, then Mishalim Damim, then he could pay also the value. But Gabiyabed, Shane Mishalim Kal Knas Al Pnia Al Piatsma, but by a slave, or you won't pay the knas on your own. If you dummy, what would be the case? The Asos Adam Asi the Beda Kutl. Witnesses come and say that the ox killed. And I don't know if it's a tam or a mud, but my mudhu. And the owner says it's a mud. He won't pay the knas on its own. I'm not sure why. I have to see in this long Rashi. So then if there's no witnesses, then you don't pay the value either. Now, So Kaifer, we're following that Kaifer is a kapara, not a knas. Kaifer kapara. Yeah, that's the way, that's how we'll learn it. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a knas, which is like the Shleshim Shalevit is a knas as a penalty, then he would be exempt. So Masav Rab Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says, has a question. Kol shachai beben chayin chayi beved, ben bekaifer ben bemisa. Anything that a regular free person you would have to pay for. Um, that means if there's witnesses there and it was done by Kavana, so you would have to pay Kaifer if it would be a free person. So same thing by Yavid, you would have to pay the 30 coins. Says, because the way the, the wording over here is whether it's kaifer, whether it's misa, I guess it means whether the animal is put to death. It must be talking about that there is a value to, to the evet as well that has to be paid. Yeah, whether even though the animal is not killed. Yeah. Yeah, but now we're now we're introducing that there's another sort of payment that has to do with um an actual value, dummin. I just would say that. Yeah, so if I would have to pay Dhamim for the for a free person, for example, there were if there were witnesses there, but for some reason there's no kaifer, I would have to pay Dhamim. So by the slave, if there would be witnesses, I would have to pay Dhamim as well. Ikadamri, there are those that say, whom I used love, whom that he asked the question and he answered it. Now, um, Uh, he asked the question, he answered it. Ikadamri, and there are those that say, Omar la Rabba Hachiktani. Rabba says, This is what it says. Kol Shechayev be ben Chayrin be Kavan al Piedim Kaifer. If it would be a ben Chayrin, and, you, and, um, and it was done on the, the damage was done intentionally, and there were witnesses there, then you'd have to pay Kaifer. Shechayev be Evid Knas. And by the slave, you'd have to pay Knas, 30 coins. If you would not have to pay kaifi, you would have to pay money. Then then you would have to pay money also by the slave. Amale Rava, Rava says, if that's the case, <coughs> we have a case we are there's no where a person kills another person um, by lighting a fire says he should have to pay, if that's the case, he should have to pay uh, money for that. 
Um, and how does Rava know that you don't have to pay because you're making it into a question is it because of the Mishnah that says let's say there was a haystack and there was a goat that was tied up and there was a slave that was standing next to it and the slave got burnt together with the haystack that the person lit the haystack on fire so Chayiv then he's going to be Chayiv for the goat, not for the slave, right? Because the slave should have ran away. Let's say the uh, slave was tied up and the goat was there and it got burnt. So then he's going to be exempt. So what are we seeing? That he's going to be exempt. Why is he exempt? Um, I thought it was an exempt because come like the rabbinai. So, but over here we're saying that um, uh, he wouldn't be potter because of come like the rabbinai because he holds this opinion holds So there would never be a chiv misa anyway on mm -hmm. fire. There would be no death penalty if you hold eshem mishum pizza that it's his own yeah, action and then it would be. Then there would be a kamle bidrabmine that he gets the larger punishment. Um, but over here it's Asha Mishamimaina and money doesn't cause a death penalty. So why is he exempt? It must be he's exempt because um, only if there's a, a knas, only you only chayev for a uh, an evet if it would be in a case where there would be a knas, which is like when the ox gores him, but not by uh, but not when he burns him. So our question is, why is there at least not money? You should have to pay. You told me that there's a monetary payment. So Gemari answers, Rishlakish explained that over here, we're talking about even though normally fire is considered a monetary damage, that your money caused damage, not monetary damage, but it's, your, it's the damage that was caused by your money. So I would say that there is normally no kamle bideramine, but over here, because he lit him directly on fire, he went to the, the and he lit his clothing on fire directly. So then there would be a kamle bideramine. Bella Mahatatanya. Okay, so we're so how do we know that there's no monetary payment? It must be from another price. It says chayme beish mi bebar. Eish fire is stricter than a bar. Eish muad es lechol bein davar roila bein davar shein roila because the fire will consume something that's fit for it or something that's not fit for it. Remember, we said that it was like referring to stones or something. But by a pit, it's only going to be chayev on certain things that um, that fall in, like the ox, but not a man. But it doesn't say that there's an added payment that comes by fire, which is the value which is not doesn't apply to a pit. Obviously, there is no added payment to buy a fire. It says Dilma Tana Vishaya. Well, maybe we didn't just, it's not an exhaustive list. We left so we left some things out. Ella Rava Gufei Mi Boy, a boy mi boy, like rather Rava himself had this question. If a fire causes damage and it kills someone um without intention, me Mishalim Dam in my lie. Is does he have to pay for the value of the person? Maybe it's only by an ox that if it gores intentionally, it kills intentionally, you have to pay kaifer. If it's without intention, because you don't kill the animals, so then you just have to pay value. But the fire, but you never, uh, you, you don't have to pay kaifer anyway. Maybe you shouldn't have to pay for the value, even if there's no intention. Or perhaps even the Gabi Shayus lay be kavan af kav let kibim shalom dam Gabi Shinami af kav shlebe kavan lay mishalim lay mishalim kaifer shlebe kavan amias mishalim dam. But maybe but by the fire where be kavana you don't pay kaifer, but but shlebe kavana you should have to pay damim. Lay adin and we don't know, but the answer is so take him. Okay.